Hello and welcome to Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King of the NASDAQ Market Site in Times Square. And with me today, John McCammett, biotech investor, also editor of the Medical Technology Newsletter. Hi, Jane. Hi, and uh, Dr. Daniel Tepper, CEO of Immune Pharmaceuticals. Good morning. Good morning. Um, let's start with a different corporate structure for Immune Pharma. So tell me what that is and what was the reasoning behind the change? Immune Pharmaceuticals, I think everybody recognized that we have a very rich pipeline, but everybody is wondering how do we fund all those wonderful assets? Uh, our core asset is bertolimumab. You know, as you know, it's a first-in-class antibody in multiple phase two clinical trials. So Immune Pharma, IMNP, the public company, going forward will focus solely on bertolimumab. Okay. And then we'll take each of the asset groups into newly formed, um, privately funded companies with distinct management, distinct board, distinct financing. So mm -hmm. Cytovia Oncology will be our immunology, uh, immuno-oncology uh, company. The lead product will be Cipline, which recently got favorable guidance from the Food and Drug Administration for a pivotal phase three uh, trial in uh, remission maintenance in acute myelin leukemia. So that's big news. There's other assets in the pipeline, but this is the lead asset. Um, then we've announced Maxim Pharmaceuticals, which is the pain and neurology, with Amiket as the lead asset, and we've announced Dr. Joe Progolisi, who is a very well-known you know, pain physician and has worked with a number of the leading you know, pain companies as well uh, in the leadership of that company, other people to be announced there. And then lastly, in dermatology, uh, we have uh, topical you know, nanocyclosporin, which... You know, this is a drug delivery play with a high probability of success, but at the same time, it's considered as game-changing by dermatologists uh, because so far, you know, cyclosporine has been very uh, efficacious orally for psoriasis and for severe eczema, but with a lot of side effects. So mm -hmm. making it into a topical product, into a cream, is really game-changing. So this um, subsidiary, which will be called Nanomed, Dermatology will focus on the application of nanotechnology to dermatology with cyclosporine as the first product. Okay. So where are we in the development process with our lead drug candidate and immune response, Dr. Tepper? Absolutely. So bertolimumab, you know, is, is our lead product. Uh, we all know that, you know, we had a number of delays in initiating the clinical trials in bullous pemphigoid and in ulcerative colitis. Now, those trials, you know, were, you know, initiated in the last several months. And we now see an acceleration in the accrual of patients. And that's very important because we have one indication, bullous pemphigoid, that's an orphan autoimmune disease. It's an open-label study. So the fact that the physicians continue to accrue patients, and obviously we don't know the results, I think is a sign that they're comfortable in using the drug in that particular Condition. Well, with open label, they can see what's going on. So it's safe and possibly they're seeing signs and of efficacy. Possibly a response. Yes. So, okay. so I think that's 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 encouraging. Um, obviously, you know, we can't release any data before they've completed the trial, but it's encouraging. The second trial uh, in ulcerative colitis is 42 patients is double blind placebo control. Um, so obviously, we have no signal of efficacy, but the fact that recruitment is, is accelerating, you know, means that doctors are comfortable mm -hmm. giving the drug, you know, multiple times. Mm -hmm. And how is your relationship going with the FDA at this point, given that you've had some delays? Or been well, the delays were really not because of the FDA. They were because of quality control issues and manufacturing. And uh, we've learned a lot and improved. And not only, you know, all those quality issues are in the past, but We've also developed a new cell line, a new manufacturing process, which we'll roll out you know, in, the, in, in the coming year for the future clinical trials. And talking about future clinical trials, you know, we have a plan for severe atopic dermatitis. You know, that's the indications where the Regeneron product, the Pulumimab, so, showed such you know, good results. Oh, oh, now, what's interesting is that the Pulumimab targets IL-4 and IL-13, which in turn, um, work on the otaxin 1. We work directly on the otaxin 1. So, you know, I wouldn't say that, you know, we're the same drug, we're different drugs, but it's similar mechanism, you know, working on the otaxin 1 on the eosinophils in a conditions that we believe is going to be like psoriasis. So psoriasis, severe psoriasis went from topicals to biologics, and we anticipate that um, 
atopic dermatitis will also go to biologics, starting with the Regeneron product, and clearly with bertolimumab as an important player. So what, um, what trial are you looking to initiate here? Uh, phase two? It's a phase two uh, trial. Oh, okay. And atopic dermatitis is much easier in terms of uh, recruitment, so we believe that we can start and complete a pilot trial in atopic dermatitis during 2017. How many patients would we expect roughly? We're probably here? talking about 20 to 30 patients, just to see a signal. Certainly. And let's talk a little bit about the financing round uh, that you've just announced. How much? What do you plan so to do? So we're announcing it? today uh, 11 million dollars in uh, new financing, and uh, you know this time it's really a very clean mm -hmm. financing. You know it's one million dollars in a convertible note, and 10 million dollars from the same investor at the market and on demand. So we don't have to take 11 million today. You know, we can take a million to a million and a half, you know, every month mm -hmm. at whatever the prevailing market price okay. is. And how long do you estimate that would provide your cash flow? So focusing on bertolimumab, you know, this is about one year of financing. Mm -hmm. And what catalyst or potential deliverables do you have in that year, in this next 12 months for the bertolimumab? Well, the results in uh, bullous pemphigoid are probably the first one that will mm -hmm. be coming. Uh, you know, people asking, is it next week? Is it in three months? You know, we, we can't predict. But you know, we had initially two sites in Israel, and we're just open six sites in the United States for 10 patients. So you can expect that you know, uh, patients will be recruited and complete the trial you know, relatively shortly. And then we'll look at the data, and we'll announce it. In also you know, it may take a few more months. But generally speaking, in the first half of 2017, we should have not only confirmation of safety of bertolimumab, but the signal of uh, efficacy. Start of the proof of concept, Start basically. Of the proof so of concept. this financing is really allowing you to provide proof of concept for yes. in a couple of different diseases. Yes, areas. and because we're focusing on, on bertolimumab, every, all the other assets can move forward with their own financing in each of the new companies. Got it. Okay, so. well, best of luck to you, and thank you for joining us, uh, Dr. Tepper, CEO of Immune Pharmaceuticals, and also John McCammett, uh, editor pleasure. of Medical Technology Newsletter. And thank you as well for joining us. For more information on small companies doing interesting things, you can go to smallcapnation.com.